Hello and welcome to this video. I'm Thomas from Vetech Innovation and today, as you can see, I'm in a typical optics research lab. And as you might have already guessed from the title, this is a Brillo and Light scattering setup. And in this video, I will talk about the experimental realization and our solutions for Brillo and Light scattering. So first of all, I would like to mention that this video is about the experimental realization of Brillo and Light scattering. If you want to know more about the physical background, the advantages and what it can be used for, you find a very detailed review from some of our company founders in the description below this video. There are also links to some application notes if you want to know about the applications and also how time-resolved Brillouin Light Scattering works. Brillouin Light Scattering, or in short BLS, is a very powerful tool when it comes to the investigation of phonons or magnetization dynamics such as spin waves. And it was also my main investigation tool when I was still working research, actually in a lab very similar to this, a bit different configurations and I was using a BLS microscope, but I will talk about the different configurations later in this video. Since Brillouin light scattering works in the frequency domain, detecting frequency shifts of scattered laser light of only a few gigahertz, one of the most important tools is the interferometer. For this, the tandem fabri perot interferometer from JLS which is the black box right over here, is one of the standard tools. I'm not going into the detail on how these interferometers work, but basically it's just two pairs of fabri perot interferometers which are being scanned and need to be constantly stabilized using some reference light. If you want to know more about this, there are also some more details in the review article in the description below. But these devices are quite complex and need a lot of manual alignment. So if you want to work with them, you need a lot of training and experience. But already as early as the 90s, some of our company founders started developing a control software for these interferometers called TFPDAS, which stands for Tandem Fabri Perot Data Acquisition Software. It allows to control all important parameters from a PC, making the workflow much easier. And since then, it has been used on a daily basis in all our labs, being constantly refined, adding more and more features, such as auto-alignment and calibration routines. The software was and is the one of the cornerstones of that tech innovation and is now being used in tens of brilliant research labs all over the world. And since the TFPDA software takes over many important tasks completely automatically, it minimizes the required interaction with the interferometer. And thus, it also minimizes the required training efforts, making the brilliant light scattering technique much more approachable also to unexperienced users. So if you are planning on doing BLS, or if you already have a BLS setup, you will know that the BLS cross-section is very low, giving you very low signal intensities. Which is also part of the reason why you need such a complex instrument like this interferometer, which gives you a huge contrast of 10 to the 15. Of course, you will also need a stable laser and a very good detector. But still then, as in this lab, to get a nice spectrum, you might need acquisition times of several minutes, maybe even several hours, depending on your sample. And it's not only the low scattering cross-section, but also the working principle of the interferometer itself causing these rather long acquisition times. As I mentioned before inside, there are two pairs of fabri perot interferometers which are being scanned all the time, which is required for the stabilization process. So the distance of the mirrors is varied all the time. And only at a certain distance, your actual signal is being transmitted, giving your signal. And the rest of the scanning motion is basically dead time. And here also our software helps you to reduce the measurement time because it allows you to define regions of interest where your actual signal is and it will slow down this scanning motion in this region of interest, increasing the overall signal and thus reducing the measurement time. And it allows you to set these regions of interest and also the number of regions of interest completely freely and also the factor by which the scanning motion is being slowed down so you can optimize the settings for your particular experiment. So our TFPDA software not only minimizes the required training efforts to work with the interferometer in general, it also allows you to 
drastically reduce the required measurement time. All right, so far we've talked about the acquisition of the spectra using the interferometer and our TFP software. But usually you want to acquire the spectra in dependency on another parameter, such as an applied current or magnetic field, in order to detect frequency shifts or changes in the signal intensity. So typically in the BLS lab, you have many different devices, as you can see here. You have an electromagnet, a positioning system, pulse generator, high frequency source, etc. And this is actually where another big benefit of our TFP software comes into play, because of course, it can connect to our lab automation framework, VertecOS. And if you haven't watched the video on our lab automation software, VertecOS yet, you might watch it later and save you a lot of time in the lab and on the documentation of your measurements. But back to the BLS setup and actually from the interferometer to the rest of the setup. What you can see here is actually a wave vector resolved BLS setup. It uses a very well-defined incidence angle of the laser light onto the sample and by varying this incidence angle you can for example measure dispersion relations and recently it's also widely used to measure the zierschinsky maria interaction and the corresponding DMI constants. However, due to the very well-defined incidence angle the spatial resolution is very low. And as I mentioned before, for my own research I used a BLS microscope which is a different configuration and the reason is of course spatial resolution because I wanted to investigate spin waves in microstructures and actually 2D map the spin wave intensity in those microstructures. And as you may already know, we do provide optical scanning microscopes as a hardware. And we will actually come to your lab and not only set up these microscopes, but also align the whole setup. So basically providing turnkey systems, not only for brilliant light scattering, but also for other techniques like, like Raman scattering or ODMR. But if you want to know more about these microscopes, there's another video online, which you might check out later. So now that we're approaching the end of the video, I want to discuss some possible upgrades to any BLS setup, independent if it's a wave vector resolved or a microscopy setup. And one possible upgrade is a time resolution. And actually we're the only ones providing the soft and hardware to add a time resolution to a Brillo light scattering setup. And as I mentioned before, BLS is already working in the frequency domain. So adding a time resolution makes this tool even more versatile and giving you a maximum information on your sample. The underlying principle of the time resolution is actually a time of flight method. So detecting the time difference between the start pulse and the arrival of a photon at the detector. The time resolution itself depends on several factors, but can be as good as one or two nanoseconds. And since it would take too long to go into more detail, there will be a separate video on time resolved BLS, but you can find already some more information in the review article and the application note, which you can find below in the video description. Another possible upgrade is the phase resolution. For this you frequency shift a portion of the laser light by the frequency of the spin wave or phonon, which will cause an interference and a modulation of the intensity depending on the relative phase. If you now scan your laser spot along the propagation direction of the spin wave or phonon, you will get an interference pattern which will allow you to extract the wavelength. So basically using the phase resolution allows you to combine a high spatial resolution while still getting information on the wavelength and wave vector in your system. So this was a long video, but I hope you learned a bit about the experimental setup for brilliant light scattering, the different configurations, the requirements and possible upgrades, and also how our software and hardware products can help you with your research. If you have any questions to any of our products, please contact us anytime. We will be really happy to get in touch with you and to discuss with you. And uh, with this we are at the end of this video and see you next time.